Hey guys, Dr. Deuce back again with another great set of music tech tips for you. Now today we're going to be looking at a set of functions that are often overlooked, but they're absolutely key to speeding up your process and making life a lot more flexible when working in Logic Pro. Now the two things we're covering today are markers and screen sets. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so I've got a track here that I've just finished producing, but I need to arrange things so that there is some sort of guide that can help me navigate and identify each section. So we've got different blocks here of 16 bars, eight bar sections, 12 bar sections, and so on. But what will be really helpful is some sort of guide that will give me an instant idea as to where I am in the arrangement. Now, in the old days, a lot of us old school guys who worked on early versions of Logic or even Cubase back in the day, we used to have what was called a map. Now, right here is my map. We just created a new empty track and empty regions and labeled the regions up, which gave us a clear idea as to what each section was. So we got your intro, intro chorus, verse, pre-chorus, and so on. However, using Logic Pro markers, this eliminates the need for us to create this particular type of map. And the markers actually give us a lot of flexibility. So let us let me show you how to create markers and how to make great use out of their flexibility. Okay, so I've hidden the map track and now I'm going to show you how to set up your markers. First thing you need to do is come up here to the global tracks um, icon and switch that on. Now you've got all of these options in here and what I tend to do is I tend to get rid of the stuff that I'm not likely to use in the project. So first of all, arrangement, I'm not using that. So I'm going to hit hide arrangement, beat mapping, not going to use that. So hide beat mapping, let's switch these all off. So what I tend to do is only display the global track that I really need in each arrangement. That's just my preference. The next thing I'm going to do is open this up so that we have a bit more space and right, we're ready to go. So we're going to create a new marker by pressing this plus here and logic creates automatically creates a marker that begins at bar one and runs all the way to the end of the song. What I'm going to do now is move along to the start of this chorus section, the sort of first chorus into the song. I've done this by simply moving the playhead there. And now I'm going to use a key command, which is option apostrophe. And now I've created marker two. I'm going to jump along again. Um, now to move along bar by bar, we can use the full stop or comma keys on the keyboard. And that's going across bar by bar. However, if I want to jump across in eight bar sections, I'll hold down the shift key and press the full stop. And there we go. And again, bang. Now we're in position, option, apostrophe. And let's jump across a bit more let's say to there and option apostrophe. Once again, we jump across using shift full stop to there, option apostrophe. And as you can see, new markers are being created all along. I'll continue doing this until I get to the very end. Okay, so I've created all of my markers and as you can see, we've got markers one and two all the way up to 10. All right, um, now this is this is great, okay, um, it's a great start. However, what we can do now is rename the marker. So by double clicking there, I can call this uh, the intro. But first of all, I'm gonna put a number in, one, and then intro, and then double click on this one, two dot intro chorus. and I'll do the same all the way along. Okay, so as you can see, I've labeled all of my markers up according to the section of the song that they're covering. 
Um, the next thing, the next thing you can do is, uh, which is pretty cool, is to color code all of these markers. So at a glance, you can tell exactly what section you're working on. So let's say, for example, I wanted all of my choruses to be a particular color. What I'll do, I'm going to use a key command to bring up the color palette, and the key command is uh, Option C. So what I want to do is have all of the chorus sections. Um, colored with the same color. Now to do this, what we need to do is open the list editor right here and make sure that you are on the marker tab. So we're displaying the markers. Now what you do is you click on your first chorus um, marker, hold down the command key and click on your next chorus and there and there. Okay, now let's say I wanted to color them red. There you go. Okay, now I'm going to color the intro slightly differently. I'm going to go to this one. And the verses, I'm going to have all the same color as well. So click command second verse. And this time that will be blue. And the pre-chorus sections I'll have as command and I'll color those let's say they were this color and then the bridge something quite different we go with this one okay and now let's close that window okay and as you can see everything is colored according to the section that they represent Great. Okay, so that's all good. I mean, you're probably thinking, well, how is this going to help me? We'll get to that. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to show you is that these are completely flexible in as much as you can move them around. You can move your markers around. And as you can see, if I move this along to here, the other markers to the left and right of them, um, they fill up the gap. Okay, so let's bring this back, however, to this here and that's in position that's right there good okay so we've created our markers they look great we've labeled them we've colored them and they're looking fantastic but there's more now this is the best bit this is the bit i love about markers which makes life so much more flexible okay let's play this track from the start and i'll show you exactly how powerful these markers are Okay, so I'm auditioning the intro. How about if I wanted to audition the first part of this intro chorus? I'll hold down the option key and press full stop. Straight through. How about the beginning of the first verse? Option, full stop. I'm gonna jump through to the next section. Again, option, full stop. And again. Let me go back. How about going back? To the previous to the beginning of this section it's option comma and again option comma option comma okay let's jump through a few um, sections fantastic now that's all great however the very best bit about this for me because i use a traditional a Mac keyboard that has a keypad, a number pad. Um, I'm going to go straight to the intro chorus by pressing number two on the keypad. Okay, let me go to the bridge. I'm going to press number nine. Let me go to the first verse, number three. How about the chorus? Now, this is really powerful. It speeds things up immensely. And I absolutely love using markers simply because of their flexibility. Okay. Okay, so we've got on our number pad, we've got numbers from zero all the way up to nine. However, how do I get to number 10? Marker number 10. Well, it's control zero jumps to number 10 and if I had an 11th marker it will be control 1 all the way up to 20 okay this is fantastic that is one other thing that you've got to bear in mind as well this is because I'm using a traditional computer keyboard on laptops where there isn't a number pad and you've just got the top row of numbers unfortunately you're going to have to 
rely on just using the option, comma, option, full stop to just jump forward and back. I personally haven't been able to work out how to use the go to marker number function on a uh, laptop, but if you do know how to use it, please let me know, send us a comment and I'll make sure to add it to my next video. Okay. However, hopefully you've gathered something useful from this portion of the video. Now let's move on to screen sets.